welcome to Hollow Knight. This game is one that I have been looking forward to for a little while now. Uh, basically when it came out and Northern Lions started playing it, I saw it and fell in love with it right away to the point where even though I knew I was going to be playing it, I couldn't stop watching him play it because it just every even every little bit just seemed to work really really well and I'm a, I'm a really big fan of Metroidvanias mostly because I absolutely love Metroid but all that said and done I finally needed to get a chance to play the game and with the Steam sale that came out recently I think a lot of people picked the game up I think the number of owners of this game tripled is the news that I saw on Reddit especially because uh, Summer Games Done Quick did a speed run of Hollow Knight, which I also very much recommend. Now, I will admit that I did start a new game, and as you may have noticed, if you watched the Temple Seed episode on Saturday, the audio is a little bit messed up because I switched. Let me read this. In wilds beyond, they speak your name with reverence and regret. For none could tame our savage shoals, yet you the challenge met. Under palest watch you taught, we changed, based instincts were redeemed. A world you gave to bug and beast as they had never dreamed. But yeah, the audio got messed up because I plugged it into a different USB port and OBS kind of forgot the settings. And this is us. If you can't already tell, the music in this game is phenomenal. The art style is also really cool. It's it's very clean and yet detailed. Very clean and as it just it it's really good. I it's beautiful. Everything's really clear. So many so many good things about this game. I do already know a lot unfortunately because I watched somebody else play the game but it's been a little while I've forgotten and quite honestly the controls while good still take some getting used to you, you, you can pick them up but you can't be perfect at them take some practice now I do have probably half hour at least into this game already. I did clear the save when I discovered that the audio was messed up because I want to play from scratch. See, and I even forgot about those. Getting up to air. Higher beings, these words are for you alone. Your great strength marks you amongst us. Focus your soul and you shall achieve feats of which others can only dream. Collect soul by striking enemies. Once enough soul has been collected, hold B to focus soul and heal. So, in the upper left hand corner is our UI. Uh, the circle with eyes is our soul. We have now maxed out the amount of soul we have. Next to that, those masks, those are... I'm going to take damage here so you'll see me healing. I'm not going to actively take damage. But the, the masks are our health. And the icon below that is the currency of the game. And we're going to be picking that up as much as we can. Oh, that's right. These guys 
These little creatures here are basically soul hearts from Isaac. They're actually really rare in this game. I'm not quite sure if there's a specific reason why they exist. My best guess is that they're using them as a learning tool. Uh, because your max health, hello, like my max health is five right now. And because of that, it takes five consecutive hits in an area that you can't find enemies to hit to kill you. Like, there's no enemies around here. If I hit these spikes five times, I'm dead. So this makes it seven. Now, there's a fun thing you can do with spikes, and that is you can downstrike on them to bounce. So we can find this a little bit sooner than I think we're supposed to. Higher beings, these words are for you alone. Within our lands, do not hide your true form. Let all bask in your majesty, for only this kingdom could produce ones such as you. And we have a charm. Equip a charm to activate its powerful abilities. We can only do so on a bench. Uh, we'll get to that in due time. Hopefully we will never have to use that charm. I only know what it is because we got it. Or I picked it up in the last run. That I started before her realizing the audio was kind of borked. And I don't think I ever qualified for it, so no big deal. I'll explain it when we get there. I'll explain charms when, when they become relevant. So, let's go back through here, since we could not loop back, and instead go the direction that we were originally supposed to go. When I first went through, I did not know that charm was there. I was just like, hey, you can bounce on spikes. I wonder if there's anything over here. Higher beings, these words are for you alone. Beyond this point, you enter the land of king and creator. Step across this threshold and obey our laws. Bear witness to the last and only civilization, the eternal kingdom, Hollow Nest. We're going to Hollow Nest. And we didn't take any damage, so we still have our soul hearts. I accidentally hurt myself <laughs> last time. We'll lose them soon enough. So now we are in Dirtmouth, the fading town. Our first NPC. Badaula. Ho oh, there, traveler. This is Elderbug. I'm afraid there's only me left to offer welcome. Our town's fallen quiet, you see. The other residents, they've all disappeared, headed down that well, one by one, into the caverns below. Used to be there was a great kingdom beneath our town. It's long felt a ruin, yet it still draws folks into its depths. Wealth, glory, enlightenment. That darkness seems to promise all things. I'm sure you too seek your dreams down there. But watch out. It's a sickly air that fills the place. Creatures turn mad and travelers are robbed of their memories. Perhaps dreams aren't such great things after all. So here's a bench. Benches are saves, and they also let you do things like equip charms. So if I go ahead and hit select, you'll see that we have uh, three notches. And different charms have different notch count. This one costs two, and it's Fear of the Fallen. So if we are ever close to death, our strength will increase. I believe that increases our damage by 1.5%. Like, sorry, 1.5 times, so 150% when we are damaged. And when I say damage, I mean like to one health. So if we ever find ourselves in that terrible situation. But here, this well is where we want to go. Now, there's a bunch of different ways we can explore, but we can finally meet our first enemies here. So, we're going to start the, the task of... Completing the Metroidvania. So, figuring out the patterns and kind of, you know, collecting knowledge as well as, in this case, currency. 
Now, I'm a big fan of down striking. Okay, so we've finally taken some damage. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, we sat on the bench. Right, sitting on the bench gets rid of soul hearts, by the way. So we hold B to focus. And boom. We're healed. Which is awesome. So here's a very sad NPC. We'll get this to why he's sad shortly, I'm sure. We do want to collect some currency, except now I managed to fall really far. We're going to find out that this direction here is a direction that I cannot currently go because cannot defeat this guy, he's got a shell, and he will shoot crap at us. But, we'll read the sign. The Pilgrim's Way. Travelers of hollowness descend through verdant wilds and fungal groves to the city of this kingdom's heart. There all wishes shall be granted, all truths revealed. Sounds cool. So, I'm, try I'm basically going to be trying to play this game as though I have not seen it before, and for the case of this first little bit, have not played it before. So right up there is one of the reasons why that one guy is sad. This is the first NPC, or the second NPC we found, because we, we cannot quite free him. But we can get a lot closer than I thought we could. These guys just charge. These guys do a little jump attack thing, try and get out of range of your sword. And these guys are another one that just charges at you. Downstrike is one of the most useful attacks. So being good at it is very beneficial. But there is, like, an interesting level of knockback. When you swing and hit something. So you gotta be a little careful. Oops, that was just bad. So I'm collecting some Geo, which is the currency. If I, I forget if I mentioned its name, but its name is Geo. We're gonna need a lot of Geo over the course of this game. We can't get through here, but there's a switch down below us, and we're going to need that. We're going to need to hit that before we can continue. I I'm going to try to not constantly re-kill enemies. Oh, that's right. I think I remember where I am. Over here, we have found... Oh, this guy, never mind. Yikes. That's close. Oh gosh, yep. If you avoid if you attempt to avoid the one attack, you set yourself up to get hit for the other one, so. But we got him. And we find our first grub! that we can free. Be free. And of course they're contained in the glass because they can just burrow straight into the earth. As we free them we can go back to him and get benefits. So I am aware that I am exploring in a circle here, but it's partially because I, I know where we need to go next. And that comes from having played this area before, which is not what I wanted to do. But we also do get to get stop in here and meet another important NPC in the Temple of the Black Egg. This is 
Oh, it's, it says his name in the bottom left hand corner of the minute here, but I'm going to read his dialogue. Hello there. How delightful to meet another traveler on these forgotten roads. You're a short one, but you have a strong look about you. I'm Quirrell. I have something of an obsession with uncharted places. This ancient kingdom holds many fascinating mysteries, and one of the most intriguing of them is standing right before us. A great stone egg lying in the corpse of an ancient kingdom. And this egg, is it warm? It certainly gives off a unique air. Can it be opened? There are strange marks all over it. I do so love a mystery. And who knows what other marvels lie even deeper below us. So yeah, that's Quirrell. And this is what we saw in the first cutscene. And there's nothing over here. So yeah, there's masks. Or what appear to be masks on it. And the first time I watched it, I noticed that the mask he's wearing on his head very much matches the one right there also. There are definitely some parallels that will be in here. Just clear out some more enemies here. Kinda go with the defeat every enemy once thing. It's good practice, and we're back at the start. Except this time we're going to continue exploring even a little bit more. Oh, see, the knockback got me there. Now there's, there are ledges here. We've already been down that one. Oh, and this is the end. Oh, I didn't mean to jump down that pit, but it's where we need to go anyway, so. Hmm. Ah, hello there. Come down to explore these beautiful old ruins. Don't mind me. I have a fondness for exploring myself. Getting lost and finding your way again is a pleasure like no other. We're exquisitely lucky, you and I. I'm a cartographer by trade, and I'm working on mapping this area right now. Would you like to buy a copy of my work so far? Indeed we would, Mr. Batman. So you hold the left bumper to view the current area. A map can be a useful thing, but alone it won't show you where you are. If you're not, if you're not headed for directions, if you've not the head for directions, I suggest purchasing a compass from my wife, Aselda. She's just now opening our new map sh map shop in Dirtmouth, selling all sorts of useful things to wanderers like yourself. She'll even sell some of my old maps from time to time. I pop back to see her when I finish mapping the area. She's always so excited to see me. So yeah, we will be heading back there at some point here. But there's a lot of exploration yet to do. Oh, that's right. This is the first place that we've jumped, run into these ones, so... Make a little bit of geo here and there. I should really heal. Yeah, those guys are basically in invincible to us. And I don't entirely remember what's over here, but here's a new type of enemy. It spawns little flies. Oh! Be free! I'll dig it. The only way we could make it was right there. So if we look at the map, which I almost... Ah! We can see... We don't know where we are. Also, it's really funny. We can move. We can walk a little bit, but since our nose is buried in our map, we can't jump or anything. So we're on the up, we're in the bottom left right now, because uh, that symbol right there is the map man. So we're right below him. Collect all the geo. If 
you leave the area the Geo goes, I'm gonna get locked in here. This is an arena. The door is locked behind us because we have to beat all the enemies here. I didn't even see him shoot that. We have to beat all the enemies in here before we can progress. This one's an easy one, mind you, but it's good to know that they exist. This is also in existence here, that one, that little thing of Geo, so that you accidentally punch down the wall behind it. This is a very clever teaching moment uh, for a game, um, because you've already been taught that hitting those is good. And by hitting that one, you discover the secret, which leads to more, which basically teaches you that breaking them leads, or breaking into places leads to good things. Uh, yeah, it's just, it's a good teaching moment because they don't have to explain; they show you. And I I I, I appreciate that in a game. Because the hold your hand tutorials, while they can be very useful and work well for certain games, if you can get by without them, I think it is just worth that much more. That's my opinion, though. So since this way is slightly... Oh, gosh darn it. I need to heal. So one of the things to note about healing is that if you get hit in the middle, it will interrupt your healing. And if you stop, you start consuming soul before you actually heal. Oh, that's right. We have a bench. So the bench saves, it fully heals you, and then there's also this hot spring. If you chill in the hot springs, your soul, as you see, goes up. So this is basically a full heal area with a save. It's fantastic. And we will proceed a little geocache here which I think is why they went with the term geo I mean obviously it's rock but and we can't get up there yet but there's something cool up there so we'll have to remember to to check there in the future when we have an ability that lets us that's one of the things that defines this genre is gaining abilities that lets you get to places that you could see before but couldn't actually get to. The seeing before is optional, but they unlock new places. And that's the important part. Secret areas, things to collect, abilities that make you better and also let you reach new areas. All these things are Metroidvania. Which, if you are not familiar with the games, or uh, obviously I already mentioned Metroid, but if you're not already familiar with the games, the, the reason why it's called a Metroidvania is because two games, Metroid and Castlevania, are the ones that kind of pioneered it as a genre. And to be quite honest, uh, are some of the best at it. Yeah, we're gonna get hit. I didn't really wanna get hit twice there, but we have the soul to, to deal with this, so I'm not too worried about it. Oh, that's right. Sure, we'll, we'll deal with the stag station now. So the stag station is fast travel. A toll machine with the symbol of a stag. Insert 50 geo. Yes, we shall. Ring the bell. And in comes a stag. Greetings, little one. It's been an age since I last heard the ringing of a station bell. It echoes down the stagway and called me to you. 
I've grown stiff and tired over these many years, and I've forgotten much. But the sound of a bell will always call me back. These stagways stretch the depths of Hollow Nest. If you want to travel them, hail me from the platform. I will take you where you need to go. Might as well just get him. Wake him up. And then I forget what all this is down here. I fell much further than I was initially intending to. Nice shot. But now you're dead too. Oh, it's another one of you. Well. Safely defeated. It's worth checking for secret areas. I know Northern Lion didn't get all the secret areas, so I can definitely still find some that I'm not aware of. And honestly, after watching the whole game being done, you don't remember where all of them are anyway. Uh, there's something down here. Forget which area this is. Oh, that's right. I can't do anything here. Can't get into the elevator, so... Also, all this stuff repairs itself every single time you walk through, so it kind of just becomes a habit because it's really fun to hit all these things and watch how dynamically the background reacts to what you hit. If you hit these, you get soul, so I'll go ahead and fill back up on soul after healing myself. Ah, it's you. Bruise, mother. So this is like the first kind of mini boss of the game. You can see it has patterns, which we can defeat. And make a good bit of money on too. But the fight's not over yet. Not that this is particularly challenging in any way, he says as he gets hit. cannot get up there. There are ways, but none that... It's sequence breaking to get up there now. Which, I'm... I learned some tricks from the speedrun that I'm not going to be using. I'm... And by learn them, I mean I learned conceptually how they work. Doesn't mean oh. I can actually do that. Oh, Goro, you oaf. You wield your nail like a club. Esme. How much deeper do we have to go? Oh, what? Who are you? I see. This old village. What a strange dream to have led me down here. If you hadn't found me, I don't think I would have ever woken. I'm sly. Usually I live in an uneventful life up in Dirtmouth. The air in the ruins doesn't agree with me, so I'd best be getting back. If you return above, come and see me. I'm probably the friendliest face left there, and I can thank you properly for your good deed. Which I'm actually going to take him up on that offer. Or her. I actually don't know if it's easy to tell genders. Oh, that's right. This is a dead end, except now. You'll also notice that despite the fact that that was down there, when we walked in, the camera was up and it didn't show that that place even existed. Which I think is awesome. It's, it's a way that they hide. And actually, I went up a way that I... that is different than the way we came in. But yeah, they, they hide the secrets by sometimes just not acknowledging that they're there and actually I like that a lot because the games that just like hand hold it for you which oh oh cool I forgot about this I remember it now that I see it 
but I forgot about it until right then. Believe me or don't. But uh but yeah, so this is a, a trolley. A door with an open slot. That we don't have anything to put in. But yeah, they don't like pan you over to like an empty part of the map that doesn't have anything there, but maybe it does. Like, they don't do that in this game. Which, as I said, it has its pluses and minuses. Oh my gosh, please don't let this be the no, don't wanna die here. You can get three full heals if your soul is full. You can get three heals. Unfortunately, I'm going to miss out on so much Geo just because. So that's right, this. Oh, nice. First try? You're kidding. Let's see if I can get back out without getting spiked. Nope. The fun part about spikes is it resets you to a specific place. So you can't just like force your way through. Maybe it was down here. I think. Oh, I remember now it is. What's down here? So, when Northern Lion first found this room, he had no idea that right now we can actually save that guy. And I didn't even realize it actually right away because you can jump off the spikes. And you can make this, I'm just bad. It is totally possible. Actually, I'm really, really sad that the first uh, run, or the first start of this game that I did got botched in terms of the sound. It just, it was so bad I didn't want the first episode to be that way. And I think we lose a little bit because I kind of already remember some of this or already know some of this because I did it personally. And doing that is, means that I will remember it much easier. So there's our first enemy with a weapon. Once he starts swinging, we can get him. Either by getting behind him or above him. Anyway, as I was saying, I think the content suffers more when the uh, audio is bad. Oh, that's right. I found this. I kind of knew about it. I kind of remembered it. But you also hear the... Oh, nice shot. You also hear him moaning and lamenting his situation without seeing the secret area. Oh, darn it. So if we look at our map... Oh, that's right. I... You don't know. We don't know where we are. Kind of. I kind of know where we are. Mostly because of Stag Station. So I'm actually going to take this moment travel and we're gonna travel to Dirtmouth because that's where we want to go we've got some geo to spend I shouldn't have skipped that cutscene I should have just shown it once it's him running down the hall it's pretty cool so we hit this that opens this door and we find ourselves in Dirtmouth now over here is the map shop we're gonna go ahead and buy <sighs> two things I think So we're going to buy the quill. I'll show you what the quill does here in a second. Um, I want, so 220 is how much the compass costs. I want to see how much another trinket over here costs or charm before I choose to buy one or the other. Because there's one I'm going to buy in here. Ah, hello. I knew we'd meet again. How do you like my cozy little store? I've made myself pretty comfortable here selling old trinkets to travelers like yourself. If you're putting a trip below, I have several items that may improve your chance of survival. So, a mask shard and a vessel fragment. Those will be things that we will want to buy in the future. A simple key. Gathering swarm. So this is what we want. Uh, do you find yourself leaving a lot of geo behind as you scurry through the caverns? This charm will make sure that any loose change finds its way back to you. We're buying this because it will pay for itself very quickly. All that geo that I'm missing, it will bring to me. Now other stuff we'll get eventually. I'm a little sad I can't find the compass, because what the compass does is it shows you where on the map you are. So you can double tap the map, or you double tap the button and, and see the whole map. But as you can see, obviously it's not finished. We've definitely been places that aren't on here. 
So if we go ahead and sit on a bench, you'll see that there's now a quill saying map updated. And if we look at our map, all the places that we've been are now kind of filled in. They've got that slightly darker hue of the, the area, so like it's a little bit of a really dark blue. It basically looks like it's filled in with gray uh, for that area, and we've been there. So you can see that there are some open doorways that we haven't been to and other things like that. So that is what we're going to deal with here. And we're actually going to go fight that other boss here real fast. And luckily, luckily for us, we can just take the stag station to the Forgotten Crossroads. And we'll be right there. Now, if you have the Wayward Compass, we'd be able to see ourselves there, but we only have 115 Geo, which is fine. We'll have 220 here real soon. Now, actually, I totally forgot to do one thing, and that is go ahead and equip this. Now, it only costs one, so we filled our notches exactly at this point. If I want to equip anything else, I'm either going to, ha I'm either going to have to unequip one thing, or get more notches. And getting more notches is not easy. You can see the, the little things flying stuff to me. That is the Gathering Swarm. It's amazing. It means that I can just walk away from the Geo and it will find its way to me. Which is amazing. Now, I don't... Can I just start jumping on his head from here? Oh, so you'll notice here that he does two damage with that attack. So you gotta be really careful. So it turns out, I, and I literally just discovered this right now, come to me. You don't actually have to be jumping to get away from him. It's been my bad that I've been forcing that or trying to do that entire time, which has caused me to get hit by his uh, butt smash attack, whatever you want to call it. Alright. So we are in the boss room. This door is closed. I think it's pretty safe to call it a boss room. I'm not spoiling anything by informing you that this is in fact for a boss. And that's just because on the map, there's a giant, like, beetle helm. Like, it's pretty obvious. At least I think to me. Can we try to escape? Oh no! False knight. So, oh! Nice, I forgot about that. So once, you, like like most Metroidvanias, oof, that is not what I wanted to press. Like most mes Metroidvanias, the bosses are actually fairly readable and kind of have a weak spot thing going. Not always true, but mostly true. So I'm getting beaten up real good. Just gonna take a moment to heal. Okay, good. I, I'm, I am definitely. Oh, dang it! That was bad. I'm a little surprised I didn't get hit on that one. I'm gonna use this opportunity to heal. I'm actually doing significantly worse. You'll notice I actually consumed some of my soul there. I chickened out. I chickened out on the heal, I thought I was gonna get hit. Because if you, if you get hit in mid-heal, you don't get the heal, and you take damage. So it's better to, to ditch it if 
you're going to get hit if you can avoid it. I was very close. Oof. Bopped right on the head. Oof. I jumped at the wrong time. Okay. We're gonna get a good bit of soul from bashing his face in here. I'm watching right above my head. Good, we got a full healer. So I learned that you can actually just bash this in from the speed run, but we want to actually finish off the boss, so. And look at that. It's just this little tiny thing. And we get the city crest, which we will need in, well, eventually. So, funny thing that I like to point out and point out last time is his mace is a bug. I don't know what causes it to run away. See, there you go. You can't hurt it. It's basically immune. Like, I really, I, I don't think there's anything you can do with it. So I'm just gonna... Go. Escape. Run while you still can, mace bug. Come to me. I believe there's also stuff up there that we want to go get. I don't remember. But we, oh, that's right. I shouldn't have... I don't remember. You, you can't clear this. It's too big. And you can't get up there, so I think we have to wait to get up there. Because we can't wall jump yet. So instead, we'll just go this way. Because there's an interesting little thing here. Well, first off, I forget where this leads. We open a shortcut, or just a, a way out. Oh yeah, it leads to the map man's thing. Sorry if I missed you. If you're feeling lost, why not pop up to our store in Dirtmouth and purchase the map of the area. Available now for an excellent price. Cornifer, that's his name. So yeah, that's what happens. That's how you find... Well, that's where you'll find stuff when you run into the map man. But we are going... To a much different place. Going to a shaman's place. So our map has been updated, so we can go ahead and take a look here. There's still a couple places we haven't been. We'll go there soon. But until then, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah, it's the snail shaman. What a what is that creeping out of the darkness? My, you're looking grim. A strange, empty face and a wicked-looking weapon. Something important has drawn you down into Hollow Nest's corpse, but I won't ask what. Perhaps the reason you found me is because you need my help. Say no more, friend. I'm going to give you a gift, a nasty little spell of my own creation. It's just perfect for one like you. Oh, ho, ho. And so, of course, we get this by... Don't be afraid. Have faith. That spell belongs to you now. All you need to do is take it. Oh, ho, 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 ho. you won't be going much further without it. I promise you. No, no, no. I don't. I don't want to talk to you. Jump. And then we absorb the spell and get knocked the fuck out. We consumed the vengeful spirit. Tap B to unleash spirit. So now we can use our soul as an offensive weapon as well as a heal. So if we're playing well, we don't have to just sit there with full soul. We can use it to clear stuff out. And we awaken. Oh, uh -huh. uh -huh. you've woken at last. I apologize. Perhaps I should have warned you about the power of the spell. I was watching over you as you slept, but you seem to have slipped away myself. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Now we're awake. I was wondering whether you would do me a small favor, not as a repayment for my gift, of course, simply because we're now friends. You see, a horrid great beast has made its home in the heart of this temple. Such disrespect. I would be quite grateful if you were to venture deeper and slay it for me. 
It's a hardy creature, but you, with your new power, you're more than ma a match for it. Good luck with your small favor, my friend. Oh, ho, 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 ho. So I'm trying to read these people in, like, the same voice. I'm going to keep mixing it up. Oh, I'm supposed to actually use my ability there now. Uh, I'm going to try and read it in, like, a way that... It kind of feels like the character is like they kind of have their own little voice. They speak in like a pseudo language. Like it's not really a language because like the woman says like in the uh, shop, the cornifer's wife. I don't remember her name. Uh, uh, Esme, was that it? Says Bapanata. Just she just says Bapanata a lot. Like, it's very clear that it doesn't, they didn't actually correlate things with words, they just did things that sounded cool. And that's fine, I, I totally have no problems with that. But it just means that the language isn't really a real language. So reading it as such is a little silly. So I'm, I'm trying to use the cues from the way they say stuff to basically inform how I kind of speak as a character for them. I'm not doing voice acting, so it's not, like, particularly important or anything. But just be forewarned that I'm going to change the characters and probably make really weird sounds when trying to read for them. Yep, that's Vengeful Spirit. I just find it funny that... There we go, that worked very well. Uh, but yeah, th that that guy is a very interesting character, and I was just trying to read his. Oh dang it! I was trying to read his lines similar to the way he was doing it, and it kind of worked. So we've got some soul hearts here. Top off on the spirit. Because this could be a difficult fight if you have no idea what you're doing. I know how to do this fight, I'm just not good at it. Yep. You use spirit to shoot him with the vengeful spirit. He shoots fireballs and eventually enemies which let you build up soul. And therefore kill him. As you can see, I did not need it. So we'll go ahead and pick up the soul catcher. Oh, so it's done then, you've slain the beast. The poor thing, it must have been terrified of you. It used to be quite docile, but the rancid air in these caverns filled it with some ancient rage. Still, you did what had to be done. You have my gratitude, of course. We both know you wouldn't have made it through without that spell of mine. Oh, ho, ho. Ah, look, the gate between us has opened. Oh, ho, ho. I'm sure you're eager to move on. Farewell and have faith. Whatever you are seeking, it will find you. Oh, ho, ho, ho. And then we leave because it was creepy. We save, of course, very quickly. The Soul Catcher is a good item that I will have to equip with the compass. We're right here by the exit, so I'm gonna go ahead, get back to Dirtmeth, equip the thing, and then we're gonna call the episode there since it's been a long first episode. And don't get me wrong, I like I like playing this game. I'm not going to ever complain about it being long. About, or about playing it for a long time. But I do have to you know, split my time at least slightly responsibly so that the episodes are good. No, I want the map. So there is... Oh yeah, there is one right here. if we can do any oh I remember this area we can't actually do anything here but I'm gonna that was just bad yeah we can't wall jump yet so we can't get whoopsie we can't get past that but that's one of the examples of a place where you find something that because I know the list of abilities, I'm not going to say it ruins it, because I don't think it does. Uh, especially because the abilities that 
they're not the most unique. There are some. There are some unique ones. Um, but, like, a double jump, a wall jump, those are things that are very, very common in Metroidvanias because they're very good ways of physically gating the world around everyone. Like, all you have to do is make a platform twice as high and a player can't reach there, presumably. Glitches aside, the player can't reach that platform until they gain that ability, and therefore that is an effective way to partition your game. But, it also, you know, an extra jump height away is not so invisible, is not so invisible that they don't know where to go. Oh, you've seen that platform. Oh man, I wish I could just jump a little bit higher. Well, guess what? You can. It, but, you know, now you can, so go ahead and find it. Alright, so the wayward compass we want, that will show us where we are on the map. I'm usually pretty good about it, but, you know, sometimes just to be sure. Now we do have a bunch of other stuff that these allow us to mark the map stuff. I don't really know what the blue cocoon or what the cocoons do. Um, you know what? Let's just go ahead and make sure we purchase all the pins. That way, or at least as many of them as we can. We'll get the stagway pin too. We can spend our geo. Oopsie. Just wasted some spirit. That's okay. Now we can go ahead and hop onto this bench here. And equip. So we don't want to equip this anymore. We want these. So the way we compass. Oh, the soul catcher takes two. Okay, well then I guess we're. I like the Wayward Compass. I, I want to get an extra notch at some point here, but I think for now I can go with this. I think the Gathering Swarm's really good. We definitely want that. And the Wayward Compass, I think, is just going to help. Maybe it, it really doesn't. I just wanted to save, because now you can see when we look at their map, you can see where we are. I think it'll help us explore stuff. If it turns out that it's really not all that useful, I'll just throw in this old catcher at the next bench that I find. But for now, I think I like it. It also makes it a lot easier for you, the viewer, to see where we are, because when you're playing the game, it's a lot more engaging, and it's easier to remember where you are, I think. Though, for what it's worth, I tend to do that a lot, and get frustrated when people I'm watching I don't know where they are, or forget where they are, things like that. So, maybe it's just me, maybe I'm just good at maps. I don't think so, but who knows, anything's possible. But yeah, that's going to be it for this episode. I hope you guys like Hollow Knight. Please let me know in the description, or in the description, in the comments, uh, if there's anything that you are curious about, if there's something you want to know more. I'm not too far into the backlog at all with this game. I'm only recording this a couple days ahead of time uh, before it's being released. And, yeah. I, I really am curious to know if you guys want to see more. I'm, I'm going to be playing this game regardless. But if there really is a dislike of it or something like that, I, I would love to know so that I can just play it on my own personal time. Because I'll probably get through it a little bit faster if I'm not recording commentary. But, I, as I said, I wanted to share this game with you guys. Because if you haven't seen it already, it is fantastic it is engaging it is exciting it is challenging i have a feeling i i will die i am a hundred percent certain that i will die while playing this game and like i'm not just gonna you know clean sweep it definitely definitely will not be doing that but that's the fun of a metroidvania game in my opinion so yeah thank you guys for watching i will see you next time but until then Keep your soul filled and your gears turning.